Hey there everyone, Ateish here and welcome to another section of this Golang series. Before we move further, a big shout out to all the people who have supported me via Pro.LearnCode Online because of you guys this series is available entirely for free and from time to time I'll mention that. So let's go ahead and move on. So in this section we'll try to write more code, we'll try to read a little bit of the documentation but this will help you to explore this language and will help you to become production ready very very quickly. So now we are out of this hello world, so we need to create another file. Make sure you're outside of this hello world and then you create a new folder. We're gonna name this one as 02 and let's call this one as variables. Now feel free to name it anything, but I highly recommend to stick with my naming and my file structure at least as of now till we hit the module section. Now right click on this variable and click on main.go and we need to repeat this task every single time. Because if I go ahead and say that, hey, you know what, I want to have a package and this is going to be variables, or maybe, maybe if I want to go ahead and say package main, because I'll write the main method here, I'll go ahead and say this is going to be my function definition main, then I go ahead and say I want to have fmt.println and I say variables. Notice here, if I do this, this is all fine, this is all good, and in fact, I can go ahead and say that go ahead and please open this into integrated terminal. I can say go run main.go and it works fine. But the reason why I told you to go ahead and do the initialization of the modules and everything because that is the way how we need to go for the production ready stuff. So we won't be taking any shortcut for every single uh, of the folder that we are going to create. We're gonna follow the same stuff here. So we're gonna simply say go mod init and we are going to say that this is about variables. This doesn't do much, just generate the GoMod file and this makes me a little bit happier that we follow the, all the good practices that is supposed to be followed. Okay, moving on. We will have a bit of discussion about the variables, so let's go ahead and start that. We'll start this discussion by first removing this line totally. So let's go ahead and remove this and let's create a variable. And to create a variable, we use the keyword of var and we provide a variable name. In this case, let's just say the variable name is username. And it is expected that username is usually string, sometimes combination of string and characters, uh, string and numbers too, but in this case, we're having this one. We simply go ahead and put up equal sign and let's just say this is going to be my name. That's pretty much it. As soon as you're going to do this, this will throw up an error because into the go, if you create a variable and you don't use it, it says, hey, you have declared something, but you haven't used it. This is not a good thing. So that's why it says, hey, that's bad thing. And you also have noticed that as soon as I save this, since I was not using the package FMT, it automatically just removed it. And that's the thing how Go actually works, Lexer kind of a stuff. Now let's go ahead and print it out. And notice here I can go ahead, because I have installed the IntelliSense, I can just write F and P, which is a common shortcut for print line, just like we have sys out in Java and other kind of a stuff. So we can do just FP for a shortcut of fmt.println and I can go ahead and print my username. As soon as I'll save this, since I'm using the fmt or fumpt package, it's going to automatically go ahead and bring in. But we're gonna do a little bit more on that. We're going to say that I don't want to use print line, I want to use a printf, which is a very similar function in case you have studied that in C or other languages. We're going to say that variable is of type, we need to find out what type of this variable is. So we're gonna simply say variable is of type and we're gonna put up a colon and then I want to find out the type of this variable. We can go ahead and put a placeholder using percent and a capital T and there are a couple of others placeholder as well. We'll explore them definitely later on. And I can go ahead and put up a special character known as slash n. We have a lot of these, slash n for a new line, slash t for hitting a tab and we'll explore them later on. And then put up a comma and now fill up the blank, which is in this case person T. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'll fill it up with the username itself. There we go. Okay, really nice, really easy. Let's go ahead and run this one. So I'm gonna say go run main.go and run that and there we go. So we see that the variable is being printed, which of course is my name and we got that this is of type string. Okay, cool, nice, getting started. Now let's go ahead and copy that and explore a bit more about the variables because it is super easy from this point onward. We're gonna go ahead and change this one that this time I want to have a Boolean type. So usually the Boolean that you'll be using is something like is logged in, is verified or something. I have a habit of using is behind every Boolean because it just makes it a little bit more obvious. 
I'm gonna go ahead and change this one to boolean. This is how we do it. And obviously now this is a type of boolean, so it shouldn't be. And first I'm gonna just copy this and paste it all the places so that it doesn't yell at me. Now obviously this is a wrong data type, so that's why I need to go ahead and remove this one. And now I can either go ahead and add a true onto this or false onto this. These are the only two values I'm allowed to go ahead and put in. If I go ahead and run this program again, and let's move it a little bit up, there we go. It says that, hey, this is of type Boolean, and there we go, and the value is false itself. Pretty cool, pretty nice. Let's go ahead and copy this and explore a little bit more because we don't want to create separate video for these smaller stuff, Boolean and variables and all of that. We'll just do all of them in just one video. Now something interesting, let's go ahead and explore that. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is going to be a small value. Let's go ahead and copy this, paste it all the time. And this is going to be since a small value, what kind of values I can put up? First, I need to change the variable type. This is not a bool. So this uint actually comes up in variety of format. You can see that there is int 16, 32, 64, eight, and in pointer as well. We will have a dedicated video on pointers, so let's not worry about that. Let's go ahead and say that if I go ahead and say int eight, and I go ahead and put out a value of 255, that's nice. Let's see that what is the result of that. Let me clean the screen and run that. And it says, okay, 255 is great. And this is of type unsigned integer eight. But what happens if I go ahead and put out a value of 256? It gives me an error. It says that, hey, you cannot use 256 on an untyped integer constant as you int value in variable declaration. Basically it's saying, hey, you are out of my bound. So how can I find out that what are the values that you can use? Now in most of the cases, the integer value is itself a uh, fine. Like you can just go ahead and use this keyword and that is all fine. It's gonna take care of majority of the values that you want to use. But for some reason you want to find out that, hey, uh, what is actually the value of this? For the university exams, of course I would say that go ahead and buy hearted, but for the real world practical stuff, you usually don't do that. If in case you want to still find out, you go up into the Go programming language specification and look out for the methods. So in the type, we have the numeric types. I go ahead and click on that and it gives me all the details. So unsigned integer can have a value from zero to 255. The unsigned 16 is a little bit more. So 16 bit integer, it gives you a value of a zero to six, five, five, three, five and so on. So values keeps on increasing. So that is why most of the time we use an aliases. So notice here there are, uh, is also a, pre-declared numeric type with implementation uh, specific size. For example, there is just int, so same size as u int. So we go ahead and directly use the ints and all these stuff. So whole story short, majority of the time you'll be using int, but just in case you want to do something very specific to OS, uh, these other things can actually save you some time. Okay, moving on, and similar goes for the float and float 32. Okay, so this is all clear and we are fully aware of it. Now moving a little bit more on to the interesting side of it, let's go ahead and copy this and let's move on. Okay, so let's move on now to the small float values because that is also an interesting discussion. There we go. And I go ahead and say this is a small float. There we go and there we go. Let's go ahead and we saw that there is a float 32 and there is a float 64. So what we do is we put up a dot, float values are basically the values which are the data type which accepts the decimal data type. So let's just say we go something like four, five, five and some big random number that goes in. So what is the expected output in the float 32? That is the most important thing that you should know about it. If I run this program, I see that this is a float 32 and the value that I get is 255 and 45544. So only this much of the value, so this is five. So in the case of float 32, I get five values after the decimal and rest of the values are being ignored. But in the case of float 64, I get more precise data or in simple terms, the precision is extended. So in this case, I get more precision of that. And that's what exactly the documentation says that this is a set of 32-bit uh, values of floating number and 64-bit values. As I told you, we won't be talking about the complex integer because I don't have much expertise on that. So there we go, basics of it is all done. Now, moving on, now we're gonna talk about some of the aliases. So aliases are like, it is recommended that we use something like 
uh, unsigned int and all of that, but there are shorter methods for that. So let me go ahead and explain that. So these are some talks about default values and some aliases as well. Okay. What you can do is, uh, let's just say if I go ahead and say I have another variable and I go ahead and say int, I'm not initializing it, I'm just declaring it here. I created a variable as well as I just added some value to it at the same time. But here, I'm not doing it. I'm just saying, hey, this is going to be of type integer and that's it. I go ahead and move on and say that this is going to be fumped and another variable. And of course, I would like to borrow this line here as well so that I know that, yeah, this is the exactly value I'm printing up. Copy that and paste it. Okay, the most important thing that you should know about is what is the default value that goes in when you just create a variable. And this is something really good and interesting and something that I like about the Go, that it doesn't put up any of the garbage values in it. You can see there is a zero, and this is always being expected. If you declare an integer, it is going to be zero, that's it. Same goes for uh, the strings as well. So try to find out what is there inside the string. If you just initialize it and you don't put it up anything, let me know in the comment section. Pretty simple exercise. Okay, there is a little bit more on to this. Uh, let me go ahead and give you on this. So this is what we have seen so far. That is float64 and all of that. But there is another way of declaring the variables. Let me scroll this and move on. So what you can do is you can go ahead and say there is an implicit type or implicit way of declaring the variables as well. For example, I'll just say that, hey, this is going to be a var and this is going to be a website and I'm gonna directly put up a website name here, which is learncodeonline.in of course. And I'm gonna go ahead and say the fumped package will just go ahead and print this. We obviously know this is a string. Notice here, nobody's complaining it and if you'll try to run the code, it will work fine. But hey, Tish, you told us into the presentation that the variable type should be declared and it is very important for the Golang. Yes, it is. And this is where again, the lexer comes in and says that, hey, if you're not gonna be saying that what type of variable it is, I'll decide it for you based on what value you are putting it up. But definitely, if you'll try to later on do something like this, that website gets a value of three, I save this, I won't allow you because I have already treated this as a string type, you cannot just change it. So that is cool, I like that. Okay, moving on. There is also another style which is known as a no var, no var style. Like you can totally ignore the keyword var and still can declare other variables. This is also an interesting type up here. So let me go ahead and do that. So let's just say we're gonna go for number of users. We are trying to find out the learn code online number of user. Uh, let's just take the liberty of some random number. You can use this walrus operator, which you're gonna see throughout the Golang code, which says colon and equal. And let's just say I go ahead and say this is 300,000. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and say font and just go ahead and print it thus. Print this out. So you'll notice that this is fine. And Golang code accept this absolutely fine. So no var keyword, no at the time of initial, uh, like there is definitely initial declaration, but this is the most common syntax. And the good thing is you can go ahead and change it and it will still work fine. So this is the most important and the most easiest thing. Now, one more interesting thing, uh, let's just say, I go ahead and say, I'll just copy this, or in fact, not copy, I'll just try to declare this. I just told you that you are allowed to have this number of users, colon equal and 300,000. This is perfectly valid. Let's go ahead and move on outside the main function. And I'm gonna say that this is going to be my uh, JWT token, let's just say. And I use the walrus operator and I go ahead and put up the same value, 300,000. So this is not allowed. Why is it so? If I go ahead and save this, you're going to notice that this is going to give me an error, that this is not the way how you should declare the variable. But we saw that, we saw that just here, this is allowed. The reason for that is that inside any method, you are allowed to use this walrus operator, but outside of the method like global and stuff, you are not allowed to use this one. So just keep this in mind. You can see these walrus operator, but they are not allowed outside. If you want to go outside of the method, then the syntax that you have to follow is going to be something like this and this like that. This is allowed, or you can go ahead and say this is going to be int, this is also allowed. So make sure you keep that in mind. Okay, one last thing, which is very important one, and this is going to be the final one. You can also go ahead and declare some of the constants here as well. 
Now, while declaring the constant, you need to be very, very careful. I can go ahead and say const, and again, variable can change the value over the time of uh, the, the period of the execution of the program, but constant, they are just constant. They cannot be changed. I'm going to, going to go ahead and say this is going to be my login token, which is of type string, and I'm going to go ahead and say that this is going to be some gibberish value like that. Yeah. The most important thing here to note, which a lot of people, especially in the initial days, omit, I have created this login, login token with first character as capital L. Capital L is having a significant importance here. Reason for that is that this is now a public variable. So in case you are coming up from other language, this is almost equivalent to put up a public keyword out that. In the Golang, we do that by putting up the first letter as the capital letter. So make sure you keep in mind. Now this login token is accessible by any other file into this folder or actually in this program, and you can use this anywhere. So since the login token is available, I'm gonna go ahead and say why well, you are having problem. Uh, this is the explicit declaration. And uh, there we go. Uh, we'll, we'll take care of that later on, <laughs> no worries. Uh, let's go ahead and call this one. So this is all about the public. Uh, I would like to put up a comment here so that you remember that. This is actually a public. Maybe you're using uh, the exercise file, so later on you might want to use that. Now if I go back up here into variable style, I can use this uh, token up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say font, and this is my login token. And of course, I can borrow a line of code from here and I can go ahead and paste this up and I'm gonna go ahead and try to find the type of this one so save that and uh, this is all good everybody's super happy okay let's go ahead and print this up one final time and there we go variable type is of string no big deal and all of that so I know there was a lot in this video uh, I have tried to show you different ways how you can declare variables and constant in Golo. Golang, some are allowed. Somewhere at some places the walrus operator is not allowed. And also please go ahead and try to dig up a little bit into the documentation so that you know what are the variables, what type it is. Although, don't buy heart any of this. As we write more program, it will become a second nature to you. Okay, quite a lot of stuff. Make sure you also try to write all of this code and that's the only way to learn programming. Let's go ahead and catch up in next video.